In this video, we're gonna talk about the seven steps to the perfect baseball swing. I call this the anatomy of the swing, okay? Now, if you're interested in learning what these seven steps are, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you feel good with your swing already and you don't need to learn anything new about the swing, go ahead and give me the thumbs down. No matter what you just did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button with the bell notification right next to it. Then leave me a comment below and let me know that you subscribed and ask me any baseball questions that you may have and I'll answer them personally down in the comment section below. Now. The seven steps to the perfect baseball swing. The first step, and the most important probably, is the setup, because we have to be in a good position uh, and set up in a, in a good spot every single time to be consistent with our swing. If we're setting up differently every time, we're not gonna have the same swing. So the setup is very important. What I like for the setup is a little bit wider stance, not so narrow and tall, a little bit wider. You could use the, uh, the trick where you just put your bat down and your feet should be about the distance of the bat that you're swinging. I like that rule. It's a general rule of thumb, but it's a, it's a pretty good one. So I like this one. You could always check there. Now you don't wanna do this every single time that you get into the batter's box because you're gonna look silly. But just like I did here, I kinda already knew where it was because I'm used to it and it feels good. So you have to get used to the proper stance, the proper setup when you're working on the perfect baseball swing. So once you know your, your setup, that's where you gotta be every single time. Now, one thing that I really like in the setup for all my guys to do is to make sure their knees aren't over their ankles. I really want them to think about knocking those knees in just a little bit because we wanna have that side to side linear energy as well as that rotational energy when we're driving. Step number two is the load, and step number three is the stride. And we're gonna talk about these simultaneously because they kind of go together. The load, which is in the hands here, happens kind of as we're striding, okay? So we're gonna talk about steps two and three together. Now, for the hands, you'll see some guys that drop their hands, and that's actually okay as long as they're getting it back up. That's called the hitch, and a lot of great baseball players uh, had a hitch in their swing. But the most important thing is that you're getting back up into a position before you start your swing that's going to be beneficial and give you a lot of success. So where I think that position is before you start to swing is going to be right about shoulder height with that top hand with that elbow back. Not so much up but back this way almost if you were going to punch someone. Okay so that's a loaded up position. It's called scat load. Okay so we want to take the back wherever we go before wherever you start. You see guys starting here. You see guys starting here. You see guys start wiggling like this. Whatever it is but when we load up, we wanna get that bat to come back and by that shoulder right back here, okay? So that's the load in the hands. The stride is gonna be happening at the same time because we wanna start to create some separation uh, from our hips and our shoulders, okay? And we do that by loading and striding. So this is going this way, this is going this way, and we're creating that elastic energy in the middle of our body that's gonna help pull our swing through the zone, okay? So now for the stride, you, you see a lot of guys that'll have leg kicks. You see guys that are down real low. Uh, they don't lift, they just show the bottom of their foot. Uh, you see guys who are just open right away. Whatever you do, whatever you feel comfortable with, you wanna use this as a timing mechanism. So it's gotta feel comfortable to you, okay? It's, there's no right way to do it. If you watch an MLB game, you'll see uh, 10 different ways to swing with the, with the load and the stride, okay? One thing that I do promote though is being 65, around 65 degrees open with your front foot when you land. So if you're straight closed, this would be, let's say, a uh, uh, zero degrees, and this would be 90 degrees, okay? So I like to be, this would be about 45, so I'd say 45 to 60. This lets your hips start to open and clear without staying too tight on that front leg and hurting that knee. It's also a good position to still leverage up on that front leg and stop the energy from continuing to go, but it also is open enough to let your hips clear and not pull yourself too far up, open and out when you swing. Now, step four, let's talk about the swing itself, okay? The swing I consider, all that was the pre-swing. Now this is the swing itself. After we get our load and our stride and our hips are starting to open, our hands are still back at that, at that time, now we're starting to swing the bat, okay? We wanna be shaft to shoulder, we wanna stay tight, we wanna stay inside the baseball, okay? One real important tip when it comes to the swing is we wanna have a good body angle, okay? Body angle is just a tilt this way, okay? We're creating an axis to swing around. If we're standing straight up, and we swing, we're gonna be very long and level through our swing, okay? We don't want that. We wanna create an axis to swing around, which is gonna give us a good swing plane, get us on plane with the ball, and be in the zone for a very long time. I actually wanna finish with that slight tilt 
over the plate as well. A great body angle promotes a great swing plane and a great swing. Like I said, we wanna stay tight, not tight in the sense of like choking, but tight as in close to our body when we swing until we get the contact. We wanna stay connected in our slot with our elbow here until we get the contact, which is step number five, contact point. There's seven checkpoints in contact that you wanna look at when you're looking straight from the side. So if I'm hitting from a pitcher over here and I get to my contact point, I wanna make sure I got my power L right here in my right arm if I'm a righty. My left forearm wants to be in line with that bat. That's number two. Head on the ball, number three. Uh, a straight line from my front foot up through my head. That's number four. My head over my back knee is number five. My back foot is vertical, number six. And my hands are above the barrel of the bat. That's number seven. Those are your seven checkpoints at contact. I made a video about this. If you want me to go into more depth, you can watch that video right here. Step number six is extension. And a lot of coaches think that extension happens at contact, that we wanna be extended at contact. This is false. We don't. What I said before was contact point, we still wanna have that power L right here. So I'm not extended at all, but I do wanna extend after contact, through contact. And that's when my wrists are gonna start to snap and roll. So my wrist, don't want to start to, to roll or snap before contact. I want to get to here, strong at contact, and then I extend and roll the wrist to finish. I want to extend my arms where I'm hitting that pitch. If it's an outside pitch and I'm going opposite field, I'm going to be here and I'm going to extend that way, almost like I'm pointing to where I'm hitting the ball, okay? If it's a middle pitch, I'm good at contact, and then I'm extending up the middle. If it's an inside pitch, I'm staying connected longer, and then I'm extending to the pull side. So we wanna stay connected and extend through the ball where we're trying to hit the baseball. Step number seven is the follow through. And I really don't have to talk too much about this because if you did steps one through six properly, you really don't have to worry about step number seven because it's gonna take care of itself. But one thing I do wanna note on the follow through because this is a highly debated subject is whether we wanna swing with one hand or two hands, okay? And this is debated. And I, in fact, am a two hand advocate, but not for the guys who have so much rotational energy that they're pulling themselves out. And this happens a lot for very good athletes uh, or guys who may be a little bit weaker in the, the core section as well. They create so much energy this way that when they keep two hands on the bat, it starts to pull them off of their swing plane and they get pulled out this way. And they start to finish that swing leaning back or leaning out this way, okay? Leaning back a little bit out that way is okay, a little bit if, you're, if you've got so, so much energy, but if it's pulling your weight all off and, and you can't control your body, then it's no good. In that case, you can dissipate some of that energy by letting the top hand go. So when you get here and then you let that arm go, if you stayed connected with this arm, watch what happens, it pulls you this way. But when I let it go, now I dissipated some of that energy going this way. So for guys who are really rotational and pulling off this way, let that top hand go. It might be a very beneficial move on your part to try that out at least. So there you go, that's the anatomy of the baseball swing, the seven steps to the perfect baseball swing. You got the setup, the load, the stride, the swing, the contact point. You've got your extension and your follow through. So work on those seven things. You could do it before the game, do it in practice. When you get into the game though, keep it simple. See the ball, hit the ball. Know what you're trying to do in that situation that you're in and get the job done, be a competitor, go out there and ball out. Hope you guys like this one. Don't forget to hit that logo right there and then hit that subscribe button. Then let me, leave me a comment below and let me know that you did subscribe uh, and then go ahead and uh, watch this video over here because it's a good one. You're gonna wanna see it.